Blessings to you. I want to thank all of you all that helped me out and served me, submit to me, and all the love and honor that you show me. Thank you so much for sowing into my life and paying attention to these broadcasts and letting the glory of God sit on you and what I'm teaching and what I'm giving you. It's going to be an amazing week. Are you cursed? I want to talk to you about something very prophetic. And I want to bring this home to you because a lot of times there are things in your mind that's not supposed to be there. There are perspectives, point of views that you have that's not from God. You never recognize I am cursed because you hear declarations and affirmations. I'm blessed. 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 But when there's silence in the speech and nobody is declaring anything. How do you think as a person? Did you know that it is a curse if you don't have a continual praise addiction towards God? That's a curse. If you, if you don't desire to live clean in your personal life, that's a curse. If you do wrong things and you don't think that God is seeing you do the wrong thing, that's a curse. The inability to apologize is a curse. Saints, it's even a curse when you're a person that's living for the world and then you say, I'm going to pursue God. And then when you gather in the idea to pursue God, it's still wrong. How many times have you ever seen somebody say, I want to get closer to God. I just joined a Bible, uh, uh, a Bible college. I'm about to learn some things about the Bible because I want to be close to God. And the Bible college is not even the will of God for their life. And people don't even recognize that you could be cursed religiously. You know, I, I'm really drifting, so I'm going to go join a church. I really, uh, I really want to learn more, so I'm going to join a, a Bible university. And people, when they're cursed, even when they say that they're coming back to Jesus, they don't come back to Jesus, they come back to tradition. They're not saved. They are enslaved with the slogan of salvation, the slogan of deliverance, but they're not saved. Are you cursed? You know, you know, I, I'm really going to draw nigh to God, but then you start doing lukewarm devotionals. You're not even focused. You're up there waking up. Our Father who I have, hallowed be thy name. Our Patrifili, Spiritu Santo. You're doing everything. Anaji, Rumba, Wakanda forever. You... You everything, boy, you everything. You doing everything. You trying to get close to God, but you don't understand if you're cursed, the activity of Satan's information is still guiding your pursuit to God. Oh, I'm serving the Lord. You're serving the Lord and that's not his will. Would you say somebody that gives you a Big Mac when you ordered a McGriddle would you say that they're serving you? Would you say this was the best service I ever had? You told them that you wanted a high seat. They gave you two cups of coffee. Would you return the review and say they served me well? Would you order something on DoorDash? You ordered fried chicken. They brought you some sushi. Would you say this is the best service I ever received? How many times? Do you bring God the wrong thing and you think that you're going to be rewarded in eternal life for giving God a service that he didn't want? Wow. God called me to sing. I'm supposed to serve the Lord. God don't want to hear you sing, baby. God told you to clean them tables. God told you to help that person out down the street. God, the Lord is specific. And it's funny how you dish off the servanthood that you want. And it's really you. It's not the one that you're serving. Because if it's about him, 
It will be about him. How do you want it? Tupac gave a better approach to servanthood than most believers. How do you want it? How do you need it? <laughs> Jesus said that the children of this world is wiser than the children of light. Saints, you ever went to a Starbucks? Look how them boys be serving you. You ever went to Chick-fil-A? Look how Chick-fil-A got the best service in the world. And I think Starbucks is number two. Why are they so intentional about serving you? Because they recognize you have a specific preference. If I'm going to achieve in my servanthood towards you, I need to find out your preference. Do you want ketchup? Do you want napkins? Oh, you don't want that? Some people don't like napkins. Some people grew up in the Viking dimension. They lick their fingers. And them the one that got that whooping cough when they're 60. <coughs> Hey, hey, get back, get back. You, take one more step. I'll shoot you in the foot. I'll shoot you. Don't, don't come closer. I, 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 I know, I know. Peter, I, I know. Jesus put the ear back on, but your ear, you don't need your ears. Because you got them big old antennas look like Martin Cousin. Dip. Get back. Saints, nowadays when people got that whooping cough, they try to play it off in public. <laughs> Now that was you. Get back. Come around here again. Don't walk past here. There's another section you can walk. Isn't it funny how you be thinking stuff in your mind when you see people? They, they, they you be thinking stuff. You meet them for the first time, but you, you walk right. Here. No, you better not walk right here. There's another. <laughs> There's two paths that you can walk. No, no, you better. He coming right. Let me get up. Since the other day I was driving in my car and, 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 and looked over, I saw two cops looking at me in the, in the passenger seat. But come to find out, they they was up there rejoicing in my car. Then the officer did my his finger like this. I saw him say, oh, <laughs> Don't worry, that's 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 arthritis demons trying to fight me. That don't worry about that first. That's Are you cursed because your approach to even things that God wants you to accomplish is still being intercepted by Babylonian information? You know, when you're cursed, you can't submit. You can't submit. You imagine how many women, when they get married, they still have friends that influence their womanhood. But you're married. Say, how do I know? I watch, um, I've watched shows before, and a woman would get married, and she would still be listening to her girlfriends, and her girlfriends are single, and they'll be telling her all type of stuff, and then she engrafts that same information into her dealings with her husband and her and her husband will start arguing because that's not his mission. That's their mission. And so now she's giving their, him their mission and his mind is not like theirs. They're females. He's a male that has a, 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 a target that he's attempting to hit. And yet here now they're trying to say something to the wife. And since people don't recognize when they're cursed, because there's an information coming to me that's making me hard towards the voice of God when he speaks. Saints, when you're cursed, something that God wants out of you will become burdensome. 
When you're cursed, it's an issue to do righteousness, but it is a ease to do wickedness. When you're cursed, you could watch an interview with somebody for over 10 minutes. You never met this person in your life, never heard nothing about them. All you did was read the subtitle. And now you're watching someone talk foolishness for 10 minutes. But then when it comes to sitting at God's feet, the one that has the right words, the one that has words of electricity and purity and prosperity and abundance and blessing, it becomes hard. I'm, I'm, a, I'm trying to focus. You know, you know sometimes I want to pray, but it's, it's just so hard. And are you cursed? See, we never really get to the bottom of this in people's life because I told you the affirmations block off the investigation. And so it's, it's more powerful for you to say, I'm blessed and highly favored than for you to agree. Well, if I really look at it, I'm cursed. My mind is not thinking about a seed to sow into God. My mind is not thinking about working. My mind is not thinking about serving someone else. My mind is not thinking about loyalty. My mind is not thinking about meditating the word day and night. Am I cursed? Did I pray today? Oh, so I believe that I'm so big and bad that I don't need prayer. That's a curse. If I'm not telling the Lord in prayer, Lord, anything that's not your will, I don't want it today. I want just your will, please. That's all I want. Just your will to be done in me. If that's not your curse. Because the moment you don't become intentional about asking God for his will, the will of the flesh start rising up and your flesh start guiding you. And it's crazy how people that don't get intentional about the will of God, they slip right into the will of the flesh. And though they have spoken things that are of righteousness, they live out things that's of witchcraft. Are you cursed? When you curse, you're quick-tempered. When you're cursed, you have no self-control. When you're cursed, you're lustful. You Saints, I don't want every tun tun that I see. I've never been like that. When I was younger, I, I, even when I was a virgin, I was thinking, I don't want a woman that serves Satan. I don't want to enter her. If, if, if this is not a woman that is sold out to the Holy Spirit, she loves the Holy Spirit, I don't even want to have sex with her. I don't want her to suck me, love me. I don't want her to... I don't want nothing from her because her body is occupied by spirits that I don't stand for. I don't stand for those spirits. So why would I want to enter into a portal of a person that is in the portal of spirits that I hate? So saints, even if I get with a woman, that's why sometimes the experiment can go bad. Because I'm not going to let the woman stay evil. If my purpose is to that woman, I'm going to check that woman. I'm not going to sit there like no, not like no sissy, like a lot of men be doing. They sissies. I'd rather things go left in my life because I check a woman than things go right while I'm a sissy. I'm not no sissy. If I see you, I will switch up on you in a minute. Me and if I'm on a date with a woman, we could be talking real nice. If I see something evil, I'm going to switch. I don't care if the dinner go left. I'm going to switch. I'm a, no, no. Uh -uh. I'm a righteous man. The Bible says righteous men hate lying. That's what the, that's what the word says in Proverbs. The righteous man hates lying. Since the, the history of even men, even when they become husbands, they are sissies. Let me see what my wife got to say about this. Oh, I'm going to go see my wife. My, you don't want that. All the women got to do is start crying. They leave the will of God. 
You don't even see a preacher. A preacher could be called by God. As soon as his wife starts saying, oh, he neglect me. That preacher will start defaming everything that he did for the Lord. I shouldn't have had did that. Yeah, I shouldn't have went to that conference. Yeah, I shouldn't have. Meanwhile, if you really investigate the thing, why the hell is she so in her feelings? Ain't you understand that you came to help me? So if I've been called to this, you should be helping me be called to it. Why did it become about you? Oh, you know, you left me. <laughs> Listen, big SpongeBob, you was inside of a mansion. Did you say that he left you with a million dollar account? Did you say that he left you with the food that you wanted to eat? The car you wanted to drive? But they don't say that. <laughs> and then you look at it. Oh, so you never recognize your office as a help me. Because if you're helping someone, it doesn't become about you. Now you understand why I could teach 10 hour broadcasts. Do you think that this physical body wants to do that? You think that this physical body is saying, oh, let me teach for nine hours and 10 hours. Let me just, let me, ah, yeah, that's so wonderful. Because I'm helping you. So it's not about me. It doesn't matter if I want to go to sleep. It doesn't matter if I, if I, if I, if I, if I want to, to relax. It's not about me. When you're helping someone, it's no longer about you. So when you look at the course of people's mind, even when they become wives, they don't even have the mindset of a wife. Baby, take that damn ring off. Take that damn ring off. Because being a wife is not about no ring or no wedding or no ceremony. It's about taking on a mindset and anointing of helpfulness. It's about a mindset of I am going to be unselfish. I am going to find out what pleases someone else. Same way with your husband. It's a life of sacrifice. You got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta love that woman as Christ loved the church. The Bible says, husbands, don't be bitter towards your wives. Because women will always do dumbass things. They'll say something dumb. Saints, I've been around many a woman in my life. I'm not saying I, I haven't slept with them. I haven't had sex with them. But I've been around many a woman in my life. And I, a woman could say something stupid out of nowhere. You could give a woman... You, 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 you could give a woman a moment of your time and she'll start saying some dumb behind stuff and you're like, wait, 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 wait. Please, don't, don't make me start perceiving you as stupid. I, I'm holding you in high esteem. I've been around many a woman over the whole course of my life. I don't desire to have sex with them because like I said, I don't desire no woman that got no demon spirits inside of her. And most women do. The Bible says, husbands, don't be bitter towards your wives. Because she's going to say something stupid. She's going to do something stupid. I've seen women tell their husband, hush, let me say what I got to say. And hi, hi, hi. Hush. I've seen worldly women be like, you know, he got his opinion, but this is my take on it. This is how I, you know. Baby. Are you cursed? How did you get here mentally? Saints, me and you both have seen stories. If you haven't seen stories, that's okay. But more times than one, you'll see stories where they'll say like a baby daddy killed his baby mama. 
And then like you'll, you'll see all social media going in down a direction. These men just crazy. Oh, you know, that's how they is. Da, 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 da. But you don't hear what the woman said to him. You ain't never going to see your child again. I'm taking your child support. I'm about to raise the child support some more. You ain't going to see that. Da, 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 da. The man responds different. Pow, 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 pow. That's what you see. But you don't hear the conversation. You don't see how that man, he, he's trying to see his son. He's trying to see his daughter. And the woman takes the child and hides the child away. And that man trying to be in his child's life. And now she done became the police officer blocking him off. You don't see those things. You just see the bullet in the face. I promise you no man shoots a woman just because. No man. No man. No, no man has ever shot a woman just because he's having a bad day. I promise you that. If you look at some brothers, do you see they kill themselves? They don't even kill their wife. A man will turn the gun on himself before his wife, before his ex. He, he'll kill himself. You see how much men commit suicide? In the black and white community, in the Hispanic community, the Mexican community, they don't kill themselves before they kill another person. So when you see they kill them, there's something that you don't know. And yes, it could be injustice. Yes, it could be wrong. Yes, it could, it could be unjust. I'm not saying that it's always like that. But I promise you, if you dig deep enough, you'll understand. Oh, well, how did she expect the man to react? He already knows that the government leans towards the woman and not the man. He already knows that. He already knows that if you call the cops, blah, 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 the cops going to take him. He already knows that. So what was his response going to be? He can't go to 911. Can't go to the government. He doesn't know God. Yes, he could go to the spirit of God, but he doesn't know God. He doesn't live for God. So what's going to be his response? The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. So you imagine you're not soft. You, 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 you understand what's going to happen next to you? Since one time we was playing basketball, uh, there were some females we was, uh, in the gym as well. The females were tired. They got tired, right? Meanwhile, it was me, Juan, uh, we had Bennett with us and, and, and some other guys. And we looked at the females. The females was tired. Now, my sons had knew that I was fasting. We was on like our third and fourth game. I didn't drink no water. They didn't eat nothing that whole day. The females was tired. And I started to say, see, women are the weaker vessel. What did I eat? They, they <laughs> we was on our fourth game. We had won about two, three straight games. Playing, playing folk playing hard and just was standing upright was good off our endurance. Well, I was good. I could talk for me. <laughs> you know, my sons had, had a little son, son. <laughs> they had a little son, son. I let them eat son, son. But woman, not a weaker vessel. That's not a disclaimer. That's not to make a woman look weak. That's how God made a woman. God made a woman to be softer, submissive. That's why he picked a woman in the form like that. And that's the beautiful thing. That's why if you meet a real man, we don't want a man. So if you start acting like a man, we, we're not trying. The softer you are, the greater the sex. <laughs> if if you're a man, you know, we don't want to look like there, there's a, a a wrestler looking back at us. We don't. We don't, we don't. <coughs> UFC, <coughs> China. <coughs> I'm talking about wrestling. <coughs> Since I remember, when I used to watch WWF. China used to come out 
You know, she'll be and stuff. But I was never turned on by China. When I look at She came out cock diesel and strong. Since if you go to a gym and you see a woman lifting up the bigger weight, she's like, baby, come on, baby. Hey, hey, excuse me, excuse me. Uh if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Mind my business? I understand, I understand. But uh, you know, you you is my business right now. You see, because uh, you know, I, you ain't got no business doing this. You know, your veins popping out when you when you when you meditating. You see what I'm saying? You calm, but that vein right there is Saddam. That's Saddam. You calm, but that vein right there is Saddam. It's all say, say, it's strong right there. Your neck too wide, baby. Your neck too wide. Was called you Ed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody say you wed Edding, wedding, but wed Ed. That's the only wedding you gonna have with Ed. Ed, take that Ed out. It's Ed right here. All of that is wide. It's too, too, too. It's too big. I'ma choke you. I'ma choke you. Uh, fingers, it says um, it's only m too much centimeters on here. <laughs> it's, too <laughs> it's too much centimeters on here. I'm supposed to choke you. I can't choke you. I can't choke you in there. Nothing. I'm trying. It doesn't choke me. I, I can't. It, I ain't got enough fingers for it. <laughs> I ain't got enough fingers for it. You you don't went to the gym, baby. You don't went to the gym. I, you up there got gloves on and stuff. You got gloves on. You got Michael Jackson gloves on. Why you... The, the neck... Hey, hey, this... You try to do a video. You can't even do a video because you... you try to show you boy. Hey, man. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. What? You swing that way? What you mean swing that way, man? What you mean swing, what you mean swing that way, man? What you talking about swing this way? Dog, nah, I ain't know you swing like that, man. What you mean, man? man? Look at the neck, man. The neck. Oh, dog. <laughs> That's just a little jokey joke. That's just a little jokey joke. I'm just... I'm just are you cursed? Because, cause see, that's a curse when you even want to get your body to look like a man and use a woman. That's a curse. Try to choke her. It's the bunions on your fingers now because her neck's strong. Bunions. You got bumps. What they call it? Calluses? Calluses? Uh, calcium. Lack of calcium. They call it cal calluses. Yeah, lack of calcium. Lack of calcium. Eat some orange juice. Orange juice. Orange juice. Since the other day, I was watching uh, uh, somebody, they was weightlifting, because sometimes you watch weightlifting videos, but you got to be pure. But you can't watch no weightlifting videos if you're if you, if you a lustful person. You can't do that. Uh, watching and a person, uh, uh, they, they was lifted up, and, and, and they was getting it, getting it. I was like, man, that, that brother getting them weights. It turned around, it was a woman. I saw, I saw several pictures. I thought about the person at the judgment when they standing up before God like this here and the demons try to get them and they try to wrestle with the demons. Demon, get your big... Get get up, Catherine. Get, get, get in hell. They done fling. She looking like Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> and you know hell ain't got no space. The Bible said hell enlarges itself. It's not talking about the place. It's talking about the population. You imagine going down to hell with big old... 
You imagine going down to hell with some big old muscles as a female. You got to... Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. You like you bouncing down there in hell. Them demons are... Like, <laughs> hey, if that's your prerogative, let that be you, baby. Yeah, so, ah, 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 ah. Imagine demon being you and you cock knees or as me. Are you cursed? See, when you curse, you don't think about the things that God made you to think about. The reactions he wants you to have in a conflict. There are some boisterous situations you're going to have in life that you have to find out the exact response. Am I supposed to respond with the insult? Am I supposed to respond with a compliment? Am I supposed to respond with an assistance? Or am I supposed to respond with silence? Am I supposed to respond with a rejection? What is the divine response I'm supposed to have concerning this? Every response will not be the same. There'll be some situations you're supposed to handle it with calm, there's some situations you're supposed to get bold and speak your peace. The spirit life will break the curse because when you're led by the spirit, it's shattering the yokes that Satan have put around your neck to do certain activities and think certain ways. The more you give yourself over into sowing into the spirit, you're breaking the yoke of bondage that you can't see in your personality. Oh, I ain't going to do that. Yeah, because you're cursed. I ain't going to let somebody talk to me like that. Yeah, because you're cursed. You haven't found what God does want you to permit. Imagine when your parents talk to you a certain way. Imagine you seven years old telling some, I'm not going to pit up with this. We would see a seven-year-old and say, that seven-year-old is rude. They're fresh. That's what they used to call it, fresh. They're disrespectful. Why is that? Because it's the will of the Lord for children to obey their parents in the Lord. To follow them as little children. So imagine when you see the little child going against their authority. You will look at that and say, they're disrespectful. Why do we do that? And then when you get 30 and 40 and 50 years old and 60 years old and 20 years old, you forget the same way God has set up a child to respect their parents. There are situations where you're set up to respect someone else. And it's not wise for you to disrespect them. It don't matter what you think. You see, if somebody arguing with a cop, you imagine arguing with someone that got a pistol and a taser on the side of them and, and mace. You understand the level of your IQ? You ever see people like that and they think that they're bad? You might look bad, but you dumb. I wouldn't trust you with a million dollars. I wouldn't trust you with 500. I wouldn't trust you with 2,000 because your brain doesn't work that well. You're going to argue with someone that got an actual pistol that's loaded beside him? Yeah, you're real smart. You ever seen somebody talking real crazy and somebody that got a gun out? You imagine somebody like that, you, you think that they're smart. Wow. Wow. You think about it. You arguing with somebody that got a pistol that's loaded. Yeah, you, you big and bad, but you know. I wouldn't trust you in a hostile situation because your brain doesn't find the divine solution. Saints, what builds credibility? Credibility is when you're a person that keeps on finding the divine solution of God in every situation. What is stewardship? When you can handle what God gives you with the correct way he wanted you to handle it. Even your mouth is a stewardship. You don't know how to control your mouth. You're not a good steward. Are you cursed? Because cursed people curse themselves even with their own mouth. Oh, I'm not going to go there. Oh, you. So, 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 so. If retardation was a person, you're actually going to speak in the direction 
where Satan wants you to go. Oh, I'm not going to ever let that be me. Oh, so Jesus became sin. They spit on him, laughed at him. They pit him in the bracket of a whoremonger, a liar, a blasphemer. And then you, Miss Dignified, Mr. Dignity, you done decided what you not and not going to be engaged in. And it's funny, many people never lived the will of God because you already decided how you was going to protect your image. The will of God will tamper with your image. I'm not talking about wronging people. That's different. I'm not talking about that. And listen to what I'm saying, because there are people that wrong people on purpose and then they got bad stuff on their image. That's different. I'm talking about when you're in the will of God, your image is going to be drugged. The Bible says that blessed are you when men persecute you for my name's sake. They say all type of evil against you for my name's sake. Blessed are you when they revile you. Blessed are you. So you can't run from that. The Bible said in several sections, the Gospels, Jesus said it. And then in 1 John, Apostle John said it. Marvel not if the world hates you. John was echoing Jesus because Jesus' spirit was speaking through him. Marvel not the world hates you. Hatred produces criticism. Hatred produces slander. Hatred produces defamation of character. When you hate someone, you seek to make them look awful. That's going to happen. So you can't stop that. I'm talking about when you are a person that's in the will of God, you're going to be far. People are going to say bad things about you. You cannot set your goal to protect your image and your identity because that is an automatic place of resisting God's will. Are you cursed? When you curse, you don't even have to, you don't even have one leader that you submit to. You have all these different men of God that are pouring into your life. You that's why you go to hell in the end. How, prophet, how if somebody got many men of God, how could they go to hell? They got many men of God. Because all of them are giving you different roles. Imagine we driving in a car and we say we going to Krispy Kremes. And we driving in a car and, and somebody say, make a left here. And you driving, you like, no, I got the GPS. Keep on going straight. You make the left. You, you, you. Now you you on the phone. Where, where they at? Where they at? They on their way to Krispy Kreme. No, we going straight. We going straight. You don't went left. So another person said, no, it's a shortcut right here. No, 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 no. And it's all this confusion. That's what it is. Many instructions. God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. You notice you don't have 15 parents. God put you on earth with two parents. And it's really supposed to be one instruction. Because the man, if, if it's done correctly, the man will be guiding the woman. Not the way that is, but the way that it is today is cursed. Because the woman has a decision, the man has a decision towards the child. It was never supposed to be like that. So how it is set up today, it is cursed. But how God wanted it to be, Adam, you train your wife. Now y'all have children. She, tra she trains the children echoing you. But now it's not like that. You see, so even in the new heaven and new earth, God is going to get victory for that. It's not like that. And even when people say, okay, it'll be like that if that was me, you watch how when you get the child, how all these demons start whispering in your ear what you should do and how you should do it and when you should do it. And now you you, 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 you said that it wasn't going to be you, but it's you now. Now you battling with spirit. See, saints, I want you to catch this. When you officially get a position of stewardship with God, you will hear spirits talking to you that you didn't hear talking to you before. Are you hearing me? There are spirits that don't talk to you prior, before you get the position. But when you get the position, you'll hear spirits. That's what I'm telling you. How come you don't check the phone of the person that's down at the bus stop? 
You ain't got no spirits even telling you to do that. You know why? Because you don't know that person. But how is it if that person is married to you for 15 years, now you're going through all that stuff? You up there looking at stuff from their childhood. You looking at their baby pictures, bless God. Who told you Who told you that? I, I, you, you looking through their safe. You looking through all types of stuff. How do you get all that authority? You see, there's a difference. When a position is given, when Haman got the position, now he wanted everybody to bow down to him. Now he wanted to plot against the Jews. He wasn't doing that before there was levels of position given to him. Now, Haman, he feels entitled to destroy God's people because he has King Ahasuerus not truly seeing him. But Haman is cursed. When you're cursed, you don't even handle promotion correctly. You think promotion means I have more accessibility to do evil. You don't see it. I have more accessibility to do good, to be humble, to be pure, to be patient, to be honest, to be transparent, to be faithful, to be consistent, to be diligent. To be in discretion. Saints, what I'm giving you in this teaching is matchless. What I'm giving you in this teaching is matchless. What I'm giving you in this teaching is matchless. What I'm telling you in this broadcast is matchless. I'm telling you something powerful on this broadcast to show you, are you cursed? Are you cursed? Are you cursed? Do you have a work ethic? You don't want to serve? You don't want to solve nobody's problems? That's a curse. How much are you bitter? Do you forgive people? Yes, forgiveness. You forgive. You forgive the most dumbest people. I forgive people all the time. I forgive stupid people all the time. Forgiveness don't mean that you're not going to hell. Forgiveness just means I'm not going to live in hell because of you. That's what forgiveness means. Forgiveness don't mean that you're away from your punishment. Forgiveness means that I'm not going to punish myself thinking about your dumb ass. That's, a, that, 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 that's what forgiveness means. So next time somebody wrong you and you want to say, I ain't going to forgive them. You ain't doing nothing to them. You're doing something to yourself because you bring your soul into a realm that God hasn't supplied power and grace and strength for your soul to be. So you're not going to win. Your soul is void from the anointing. But when you forgive, you reconnect yourself to the Lord. When you forgive, you bring yourself back into the spirit of God. When you forgive, you bring yourself back into power and joy and peace. Saints, I want to say this to you, and I feel this real strong because the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you this, right? Don't let your emotions be wounded throughout your day. Some days your emotions can go through a lot of abuse. Don't go through double-mindedness. Double-mindedness is emotional abuse. You are confident one minute and now you're suspicious the next. You're planted one minute, you're wavering the next. Do not go through emotional abuse. Set yourself in joy at all times. Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Why they say again? Because this is a repetition. Repetition, practice. Keep on doing the thing. Continue, continue. Don't. Let your soul go through abuse. Emotional abuse destroys your salvation. Emotional abuse destroys your momentum and purity. When you go through emotional ab abuse, you backslide. You go right back to sin. It's impossible for you to be in a bad state emotionally and not lose the battle with temptation. You will submit yourself to all of your temptations when you don't protect your emotions. Your emotions is supposed to be governed by the anointing of joy, which is the fruit of the spirit as well. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Joy is a dimension of uh, emotional management, emotional anointing, emotional and mental anointing. You need a mantle for your mind and your emotions and you protect it by joy and peace. 
Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. It says, let the peace of God. Let the peace of God. How do you walk in the peace of God? Through thankfulness and meditation of the word. Through thankfulness and meditation of the word. If you don't have joy, you don't have loyalty to God's will. Wherever you're not enjoying yourself, you become disloyal. Wherever you're not enjoying yourself, you become disloyal. Wherever you're not enjoying yourself, you become unfaithful. All of your distractions is the pursuit of joy. But it's the pursuit of joy through the wrong direction, through the wrong suggestion. Think about it. Temptation is the pursuit of pleasure. The pursuit of pleasure is the pursuit of joy. You're looking to be joyful through satanic methodologies, through satanic strategies. If you're going to protect your walk with God, master the fruit of joy. You should never be sad. When somebody talks to you that's over you, don't be giving them no sad response. Because your sad ass could be replaced with somebody that's joyful. Nobody got to take on your sad ass. That's why people had concubines in the Old Testament. Because when the king would come to his wife and she was a sad ass woman, he had another piece of legs that he was going to go to that wasn't sad. I'm just telling you in the scripture. I'm giving you a reference that God could find somebody that got a glad mindset to things that you sad about. Oh, I don't want to get away from this. I don't want to stop doing this. It's so hard for me. Well, there's somebody that want to get away from it and they're going to do it joyfully. So God going to use them. He can replace you. He can replace you. And saints, there's nothing that inspires me daily more than remembering this body called Prophet Joshua Holmes could be replaced. Yes, the spirit of God could take over someone else and possess someone else to say what I say, do what I do, think like I think. Yes, yes, they will have to go through a lot of regiments and consecrations and concentrations and sanctifications and patience and endurance and long suffering. And, and they'll have to do that. But it's possible. It's not impossible because it was possible for me. You know, so 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 even in all of your greatness, you can't look at your greatness and say, no, you know, it's impossible for some. No, no, because it was possible for you. So the same spirit of God helped you get there. The same spirit of God possessed you to get there. Same spirit of God can possess someone else. Yeah. So so next time that you feel like you you miss a ditty, oh, I'm having a bad day. I got right for this. I got right for this. Yeah. But there's somebody that's not going to have a bad day. There's somebody that's not going to be sad. There's not some, there's somebody that while you saying I got to be disloyal, I can't help it. There's somebody that's going to be loyal and can't help it. When you saying I can't protect my eyes, I can't stop watching this. There's somebody that can protect their eyes and can stop watching it. When you talking about I'm somebody I can't sew right now. I can't sew if I wanted to. When there's somebody that could sew and they will sew. You're always a possibility to be replaced. And what you're unwilling to do, somebody is willing to do. It should humble you. And that's why we give the Holy Spirit our all. In season, out of season, at all times. We give the Holy Ghost our all. And we take pleasure in doing it. And we give him joyful servanthood. This not no grudging servanthood. This not no hateful servanthood. This not no weary servanthood. We don't want no tired servants. Come unto me with joy, peace, happiness, expectation, energy. Come up. In your excellence, the excellency of Jacob. We were just talking about that yesterday. Psalm 47, I believe. Just think about this. Give God your best like it's your last day on earth. Because if you don't want to do it, somebody will do it. There's always another you. The first Adam disobeyed God, both male and female. And here comes the second Adam doing everything that they refused to do. There was women that chose not to follow Jesus. Then there was certain women and they gave their all to Jesus. They took their money. They sold into Jesus. They took their time. Listen to Jesus. They took their bodies. They gave Jesus pleasure towards helping them with the gospel and everything that people said they wasn't going to do, somebody else did it. Judas said no, Matthew said yes. Judas betrayed Jesus, Matthew continued with Jesus, was a disciple, fulfilled the apostleship. Everything that you say no to, somebody is going to say yes to. So when you think that you're all that, remember, 
all that the Holy Ghost has made you to be, he can make somebody else to be all that and more because they're more willing than you. They're more receptive than you. They're more attentive than you. They're more on fire than you. While you having mental troubles after you don't walk with God, there's somebody that's going to walk with God and ain't going to have no mental troubles. While you unthankful and you disrespectful towards God's goodness, there's somebody that's going to thank him all the time and going to respect him and acknowledge his presence and say, Lord, if this not of you, I'm going to get myself away from it. I'm going to get myself away from it. I'm not going to play with fire. I'm not going to hurt you, Lord. While you up there careless about the Lord's heart, there's somebody that's going to be careful of the Lord's heart. And they're going to say, Lord, I want to make you happy in every moment, with every word I speak, with every thought I think, with every deed I do. While you careless and reckless in your mind, your schedule, your time all over the place, there's somebody saying, Lord, no, I'm going to stick to this straight and narrow path. While you talking about, I ain't submitting to no one person. Fine, take your cock and do the do so. Submit to everybody. Submit to everybody. There's a person that's going to submit to one person. And they're going to say, hey, this my leader. This my Jesus. I see you, Lord. I see you talking to me. I see you teaching me. I see you honoring me. I see you. And I'm going to honor you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be your best friend. I'm going to be your helper. I'm going to be your wife. I'm going to be your church. I'm going to be your bride. I'm going to be. There's always going to be somebody that's going to say yes to what you say no to. Saints, I'm teaching my daughters and they that. I'm teaching my daughters and they that. One time I told my daughter, I told my daughter, I told my daughter, she can, she can understand too. I told my daughter, I said, there's many little children who want to be around me. There's many little children that in my ministry, they will want they will want me to talk with them and spend time with them. So don't take me for granted. I told my daughter, I trained my daughter. When she see me, if I come to you, give me a hug. But then her reactions is superb. I've never seen a woman react like my daughter. I'm still training women to react, react like my seed. I'm still training women to react like my daughter, a four-year-old. I've never met a woman that reacted like my daughter. But I train them. Now women react great, but I had to train them. My daughter came out with good reactions off the jump because she was full in my spirit. But value the presence of greatness. Value the presence of greatness. If I ever call you, you better walk tread. You, you better understand why I'm calling you. If I was to tell you, meet me here, call me, talk to me here, text me here, message me here, email me here. If I was to tell you that, understand, I got big purpose of why I'm doing that. And I ain't playing. Don't miss God in this life, especially when he's attempting to cleanse you from generational demons. When he's seeking to set you free from generational demons. Don't you want to win? Don't you want to conquer? You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. Don't you want to conquer? Don't you want to win? Don't you want to win? Are you cursed? Because when you curse, you don't even have determination to be right. You don't have determination to be clean. You don't have determination. Are you cursed? You don't have no determination to pray, seek God. Are you cursed? Because cursed people, they are at ease in Zion. They're at ease in the Babylonian system. All that's in the world, 1 John says, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. People are proud about their lifestyle. That's what pride of life means. They are lustful with their eyes. That's all they use their eyes to gain information on how to be more distracted, how to trespass against God, how to do what they want. And the lust of the flesh, they, they live for their body. 
They only want to serve their bodies. 